All right, St. Andrew joining us as well, too. It is now 15 minutes past six o'clock. Have you ever spoken with a hypnotist? Talk about a genie? Well, the hypnotist, Sean Michaels, is our guest coming up right after this home run on the edge. And then we'll take some more of your calls. The following is a public... Dion Mattis. Dion Mattis. Well, 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 we are in home run on the edge 105.1, 105.3 FM. It is 18 and a half minutes past six. And with the times that we are currently living in, um, it has required many persons to seek out therapists, counselors, life coaches, but probably not quite like the one we have with us this evening. We are pleased to be joined by Sean Michaels of Cerebro Hypnotism. Good afternoon, Mr. Michaels. Thank you for taking the time to be with us this evening. Hello, good afternoon. It was was definitely my pleasure. All right. Well, first of all, let me just clarify this before we jump into it. You can't hypnotize me over the phone line right now, right? I could. No, please don't. (laughs) No one, no secret, but <laughs> No, don't worry, don't worry. I, 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 I don't delve into people's life unless I have to, and that's with their confidence and after this kind of content for them. Mm. All right. Well, once again, thank you for being here. Mm-hmm. Um, can you first of all share with us, Sean Michaels, why hypnotism? How did it come about? What made you choose this avenue? Okay. Well, hello, um, listeners. My name is Sean Michaels also known as Sean Davidson. Um, So, here we go. I started Kaizen Hypnotism, which is the one that deals with life coaching using hypnosis. And then I started Cerebral Hypnotism, which is a demonstration of hypnosis and the different levels of trance. So, here's what happened. When I was about seven, I I remember it like it was yesterday. I was in the back of my mom's car driving, and the thought came to me when I was about seven. And I said, you know, I can manipulate people. That's a very strange thought to have at seven years old. But I mean, I had it and I said, hmm, but what if I could do this for the betterment? Like, what if I could manipulate someone for the betterment of themselves? Mind you, I didn't know what about oh, hypnotism or hypnosis or what I was in there that started. And then in high school, I was talking to someone on the phone, just like, no, don't worry. You won't be hypnotized. I'm not giving any induction or any suggestions. And I apparently developed a rapport similar to probably what you do on your show where it's a more of an investigative tone. I ask you a question and you answer and that rapport continued until that person apparently became unconscious and I didn't know. And everything they said just sounded very unfiltered. Like they sounded like they were pouring into a journal or something. So I I said, hello. And they go, hmm. And then I was like, are you awake? They said, "Mm mm-mm. So I was like, huh? (laughs) <laughs> you know, that big question like, what do you mean by you're not awake? So, essentially, I had asked them a question and they answered it. And it's a question that was very personal. And I asked them before and they didn't tell me. So, I was wondering how they told me this now. But, you know, at that age, I just kind of hung up the phone and said, all right, something weird happened while ago. Next day, I said, hi, do you remember telling talking to me yesterday? I said, yeah, we're talking about school and whatever. And then I said, remember telling me anything else? And they're like, no. And I told them what they said to me. And they looked at me with the... Trust me, if they could turn white or turn pink, they would have. They asked me blatantly, who told you that? How do you know that? And I said, you. So mm. that's how I discovered that I could do it by accident. Literally by accident. And the, the years after that, I kind of did a lot of researching and a lot of documenting and so forth. And that's when I discovered that hypnotism was actually real. And what I did was known as conversational hypnotism. Uh, give me an idea. How long have you been doing this again, you said? Eight years. Eight years. All right. So let's just look at the hypnosis now. Take it away from you. For everyone listening on the edge, we are yeah. speaking with Sean Michaels, I have yeah. here, um, of Cerebro Hypnotism. And Kaizen what? Hypnotism. Say that again, I'm sorry? And Kaizen Hypnotism. All right. So, yeah. no. Let us ask you, on, on behalf of the clients, what does hypnosis do for the client? Okay, so firstly, hypnosis, all, 
allows you to kind of disassociate from reality. Disassociate means be completely drawn in, only in your mind. You don't need to look at anything else. You don't need to hear anything. You don't need to focus on anything else except for yourself. And you're practicing mindfulness, meaning your entire consciousness is only in your thoughts. And in this state, you're highly suggestible to your own suggestions or to a hypnotist like myself. And you're extremely relaxed. So what it does, it allows every single muscle tension you have in your body from a, you know, achy back, achy neck, all those things. You don't feel any of that. And you release all those muscle tensions that you get from probably sitting in a weird posture or if you feel distracted throughout the day, it helps you to focus your attention. All of your attention. No attention on, oh, what do I have to do later? It's only presentness. So it's similar to meditation. But you know a lot of Jamaicans are are very skeptical and <laughs> you know don't 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 want to to, to to step in a certain direction. Are person signing up for this? Yeah, I started um, doing this from about five years ago, and then I got an office in New Kingston last year during this whole COVID pandemic. And I, my client number has actually been going up because trust me, people are moving away from the more traditional means, mm. you know. So that's how my client is. And then since doing the article for both the Gleaner and the Observer, I mean, yeah, you have some nature, but I expected that. From when I was younger, I spoke to my late mother and father and told them, I hope you're around for when the church people come for me and try to <laughs> put me on the stake. <laughs> but are some, people, are some people easier to hypnotize than others? Excellent question. Yes, that is actually true. Those people fall in the category of Somniambulistic, that means that you talk in your sleep or you sleepwalk or you have very vivid dreams. Meaning if you wake up, you remember the entire dream from beginning to end. So those are the persons who are easier to hit. Not easier. Not easier. Oh. You are better. Better. Yeah. Because easy gives the connotation that, oh, you're easy, man. My my brain tough and me small. I am not stupid. I, I can't be hypnotized. Hypnosis has nothing to do with intelligence. Actually, if you're more smart, you're easier to hypnotize and better to hypnotize. You're a better client. Mm. Yeah. So right. nothing... Go ahead. Or were you reiterating the point? Yeah, you're re- reiterating the point. All right. So um, I come into you and you have me as a client. How long do you usually keep the client in a trance? Okay. So first thing, we start with a consultation. That is where I evaluate you. So I need to know how deep rooted this problem is in your unconscious mind, as well as the kind of history behind it, right? Uh, I I would introduce you to trans for about uh, 20 to half an hour during the consultation, just so that you understand what it feels like beforehand. Because I like start hit the ground running when I do in session. I don't like going around the bush because everybody has things to do and you come here for a purpose. So when you start sessions, those sessions are an hour. That's where we do some deep diving majority of the session is while you're under hypnosis or in trance reason being we know about the super ego and the ego and all these things so the answers we give people are supposed to be socially acceptable they're not necessarily the truth you kind of go over the truth with a fine teeth comb and pick out what people aren't going to judge you based on but that's not actually going to help you so when i ask you and relay suggestions to you while you're in an unconscious state you have to be bluntly honest because your unconscious mind doesn't allow you to lie to yourself that is why eventually the mask has to come off if you're pretending to be happy that's why you're depressed because you're pretending to be happy Mm. okay so you strip us and you bear the soul (laughs) well (laughs) well well what what you call soul we call unconscious mind unconscious mind yeah that's about 90 85% of your actual mind. We're only conscious of the 10 to 15%. That's why a lot of people think we only access 10 to 15%. We access everything. Just that we're only aware of 10 to 15%, which is your conscious mind, meaning you looking, hearing, tasting, smelling, and touching things. Mm. I mean, we watch shows. We see all types of things. I I guess my listeners would want us to ask you, is, is it at all a dangerous practice? Dangerous. Well, okay. So, in terms of side effects, I can tell you about that. And it's potential. Highlighting the word potential because based on your professionalism, 
your experience and your approach, this is how these things can come about. So the first thing would be um, drowsiness. So I am, I have to, or not me, but a hypnotist has to relax you to the point where you're so relaxed, it's only by touching you, you'd probably see the person, you know, breathing because they're, they're breathing so lightly, like as if they're sleeping. Not No big, heavy, deep breath, very slow, very rhythmic, right? So that drowsiness comes from you relaxing your body. So because of that, at the end of every session, I do what is called a wake-up call. So I call from, so I count from 10 up to 1, making the person feel revitalized and able to go about the day. So you give so wake-up calls, eh? Yeah. <laughs> the way, yeah, yeah, I have to do that. Yeah, I have to do that because especially because, you know, persons might be going home on the bus or driving and you don't want to be in and out of conditions like that. Mm-hmm. It's actually pretty dangerous. Yeah. For, for persons um, listening, this is a, a, a new field, although it's been there through the ages, mm-hmm. it's a new field. How expensive is it? Was it? What is the average cost of a session? Okay. Um, so, firstly, um, the consultation is $4,000 at my office in New Kingston, All Care Pharmacy and Wellness Centre. And sessions are $8,000. You do get discounted rates if you're paying for two weeks or if you're paying for the month in advance. So, for example, if you're paying for two sessions, which is, and one session is each week for one hour, you'd be paying 15 cents instead of 16. And if you pay for the month, you'd be paying 28 instead of 32. All right. So just for, for persons to see how far to stretch the pocket to have mm-hmm. have you um, um, with us. If you're just joining, we're speaking with Sean Michaels. And um, we're looking at hypnotism. So I need to ask you now, what, what type of person, what are some of the conditions that clients usually seek hypnosis for? Okay, so, so far, the cognitive aspect, meaning your thoughts, it's usually people who get easily distracted or what I um, understand to be social media addiction. So meaning, um, even today, I actually had a client who was sharing with me that when she would go on her phone, to um, look up the definition of a word, she by the time she takes up the phone, she doesn't remember even needing to go and look for a word. She's immediately on some social media platform. So that issue of focus in your mind is a huge problem, especially in this day and age, especially during this pandemic, because everything is distracting me. Am I going to get sick? Am I relatively sick? You know, all these different things are going on. And for the emotional aspect, I see persons who, trust me, suffer some really traumatic events in their life, whether it's abuse so they sexual or you know verbal or physical also persons who have lack of self-worth they're questioning their their own abilities they're, they're questioning their purpose all these different things that you know kind of make you feel like why am i bother doing this you know like why should i even bother to keep going or motivate myself to be a better person or anything like that so trust me i do both aspects my logo is actually a yin and yang, also called Tai Jitsu, which it's actually about balance. So whereas I help people with cognition, which is thoughts and how you process information, I also help with the emotional aspect as well. How many other persons do you know um, who are practicing Hypnot- hypnotists? Yes. To be honest with you, none. And if they are, they'd kind of mention it only um, if they kind of wanted to go into that. But I think for them, they feel like they have a lot more to lose, especially because most of them are either psychologists or doctors, and you're doing hypnosis, and depending on who you're doing the session with, you can be labeled as a, as, you know, as a witch doctor, obian man, or whatever. But me being young, I said, you know what, I'm going to take this risk. I'm going to be a part of the movement to debunk these things. I'm going to be fighting against the endless waterfall of ignorance. But it is an upward climb. Hmm. Do you see this becoming a more widely used form of therapy? Oh, for sure, for sure. It's actually, trust me, it's almost everywhere in the world now. You know, it's growing in its um, acceptance. And to be honest with you, back to what you're asking about how expensive it is, abroad, a session with a hypnotist or a hypnotherapist can actually run you up to 150 US per hour. And that is if they even do an hour. Some of them do 40 minutes. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, you're you're here to change Jamaica, to change our perspective. You're saying, with I'm, our views. 
and well, uh, how we embrace this form of of medical of of how should I say mental assistance? Yeah, mental wellness because I think when people get wrapped up around terminology like mental health or mental wellness, they can start thinking that oh, okay, I am my you know whatever it is or or maybe it is that I need to go through this long process and need to be taking one bag of pills and etc. Mind you, my mom, my late mom, she was a psychiatrist and she did diagnose um, persons and give them prescriptions. So I do see the value in that. But I do believe that the human mind itself, in any case, just like when you get a bruise, it's able to heal itself. But that in itself takes a lot more effort and a lot of people don't have the time nor they don't know how to do it themselves. Sean Michaels, thank you very much. Hypnotist, life coach. He says he wants us to have a view and have a look. How do you feel after listening to him this evening? It is here and in Jamaica, hypnotism as a form of therapy. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, it it, it was definitely my pleasure. Thank you. All right, 6.33, home run on the edge. I hope you are awake as you drive. (laughs) Hands on the steering wheel still. And um, we're going to take you through the rest of our Friday experience here on The Edge. And just to get to tell you again, Sean Michaels was the name, a hypnotist and life coach. And yes, I feel clear. I feel good. And he has a lovely tone of voice. I think um, maybe go to the couch.